and to study white pedera from many aspects. In many aspects, you can find information in this table. They have been involved in a variety of opportunistic infections in the immunosuppressed patient. But pay attention about disseminated infection. When one person has a complete immune system, has a very good and a strong immune system, this infection usually doesn't occur, or if occurs, they can be localized, they usually remain localized in just one area. But when person is under immunosuppressed regime, immunosuppressed therapy, such as people who have leukemia, who have organ transplantation, multiple myeloma, aplastic anemia, uh, or solid tumors or AIDS, these person, patients has a, um, immunocompromised person. There are defects in their immune system. So in this situation, this kind of fungal infection converted to disseminated infections can be spread and get all of the body very rapid and it's very dangerous and can be killing too because the weakness of immune system or defects of immune system. Disseminated infections are widespread with lesions occurring in liver, spleen, lung and gastrointestinal tract too. Some lesion will occur in these important organs such as liver and spleen and uh, it will disturb the proper working of this organ so this infection can be very life-threatening and killing. Infections in non-immunosuppressed patients include endophthalmitis and intravenous drug abuse. If they don't have immunosuppressed but uh, due to uh, intravenous drug abuse may cause this sort of infection. But what is clinical manifestations? Infections uh, are usually localized uh, to the axilla or scalp, but may also be seen on facial hairs and sometimes pubic hair. White pedera is common in young adults. The presence of irregular, soft, white, or light brown nodules, 1.0 up to 1.5 millimeters in length, firmly adhering to the hairs, is characteristic of white pedera. Uh, for example, under microscope, if you observe this structure, a hair with uh, this concrete and uh, tough white colony of fungi, you should guess it must be white pedera, something like that you may see. It has been stained and it is without stain under microscope. You can see these are the hair of the patients and these things are colony of trichosporon, it's white pedera. These things can be used for microscope watching and also they can be used for culture. Hair fragments should be implanted onto primary isolation media like subrodextrose agar. Colonies of trichosporin species are white or yellowish to deep creme colored, smooth, wrinkled, velvety, dull colonies with a mycelial fringe. Serology usually is not required and identification uh, like as other fungal infections are based on uh, characteristic clinical microscopic and culture features. For management uh, the first things is shaving the hairs. Shaving the hairs is the first and simplest uh, method for treatment. Uh, and then a topical application of an imidazole agent may be used to prevent reinfection. Now, uh, let's talk about black pedera, another sort of superficial mycosis. 
Black Pedera is also known as trichomycosis nodusa or tinea nodusa or trichosporosis, all the same. Uh, caused by Pedera horti, fungus infection of the hair shaft resulting in the formation of small black nodules. Because of that, it's called black pedera. The fungal elements are attached to the hair shaft to form nodules along the hair shaft. Pedera refers to colonization of hair shaft and result in firm irregular nodules. If the nodule is dark, the infection is black pedera and is due to pedera horte fungus. It is common in Central and South America and Southeast Asia. But what is clinical manifestation? Infections are usually localized to the scalp, but may also be seen on hairs of the breed, mustachio and pubic hair. Okay. And black pedera mostly affects young adults and uh, epidemics in family. Why it can become epidemic in family? Uh, because of uh, some bad habits uh, or poor hygiene uh, will cause to be epidemic in a family. For example, it has been reported uh, sharing combs or hair brushes will cause to transfer the infection from one person to another and make it epidemic in a family. What is the laboratory diagnosis of black pedera? Uh, at first, uh, you should be focused on clinical material. Clinical material which is needed here is epilated hairs with hard black nodules present on the shaft. So, epilated hairs with the Black nodules can be our um, specimen. After that, uh, we should go for direct microscopy. Hair should be examined using 10% KOH and Parker ink or Kalkofluor white. Look for darkly pigmented nodules that may partially or completely surround the hair shaft. Nodules are made up of a mass of pigmented with a stroma-like center containing a sky. For culture, uh, we should use a primary isolation media like subrodextrose agar and hair fragment should be implanted onto this media. But uh, remember that, uh, remember that uh, black pedera uh, or Pedera horte is very slow growing. Uh, when you culture it, it may take two or three weeks to appear the cloning. So before this time, please do not discard your plate. You should wait more to visit the colony of a fungus and complete your identification. Serology for diagnosis is not needed and characteristic uh, clinical microscopy and clinical uh, culture features are cornerstone for diagnosis. However, uh, using molecular method can be effective too if there is any kit for pedera horte. But what should we do for uh, treatment of a black pedera? Uh, the first thing is using uh, ketoconazole 2% or 2% myconazole shampoo or 1 to 1.5% cyclopyrox shampoo applied once or twice per week for three to four weeks. Uh, actually, one month may need to use uh, this uh, shampoo repeatedly regularly. Uh, besides that, Oral terbinafine tablet, 250 mg, once daily for six weeks. Or oral uh, terbina um, itraconazole, 100 mg twice a day after a meal with the citrus drinks for one to two weeks. Uh, yeah. Especially you should use a citrus drink and use it after meal because um, 
eating something and using a citrus drink things too will help to increase the uh, pharmacokinetic and absorbance of drug absorbance of itraconazole after meal and uh, with using citrus will increase uh, and also we should counsel with the doctor or uh, hygiene person uh, hygiene specialist person uh, about uh, good scalp hygiene and uh, avoidance of sharing combs or hair brushes and etc are the method for uh, taking care of patients now here we should uh, finish the superficial mycosis the most important superficial mycosis was tina versicolor tina niger black pedera and white pedera now we are going to start cutaneous mycosis as you can see in this table the first row uh, is dermatophytosis, ringworm of the scalp, globulars of skin, and nails. Dermatophytosis can be caused by dermatophyte fungus such as the Arthroderma, Microsporum, Trichophyton. You know that. You know you know dermatophytes very well. In previous session, uh, we studied their structure with each other. This infection is very common. The next line uh, shows the conviviality of, of the skin, and uh, the last line is dermatomycosis. Today, we are just talking about dermatophytosis or ringworm, but these two will remain for the next session. Now, let's talk about dermatophytosis or tinea or ringworm. Dermatophytosis or tinea or ringworm of the scalp or glabrosa skin and nails is caused by a closely related group of fungi known as dermatophytes, which have uh, the ability to utilize crotin as the nutrient source. They use crotin as a food, as a nutrient source. Uh, that, uh, because of that, uh, we should say that they have a unique enzymatic capacity. Uh, they have an um, enzyme which is called crotinase. And by crotinase, they can degrade crotin and use it as a nutrient source. The disease process in dermatophytosis is unique for two reasons. Firstly, no living tissue is invaded the crotinized stratum corneum is simply colonized. But the presence of the fungus and its metabolic products usually induce an allergic and inflammatory eczematous response in the host. You know that there is no invasion or inflammation in this disease, but due to presence of fungus or because of its metabolic products, the immune system can be irritated and allergic reaction or inflammatory eczematose may occur in the patients. Uh, the second uh, thing which uh, shows, uh, which causes this in, uh, infection to be important uh, is that uh, dermatophytes uh, are uh, very dependent on human and animal infections for survival and dissemination of a set of species and severity of the disease totally is related to a kind of species, kind of strain and kind of host too. Uh, because of these two reasons, we should pay attention to these um, fungus in many aspects. Uh, before starting the different form of dermatophyte disease, uh, we should talk about dermatophyte fungi a little bit. Uh, as uh, you know, these fungi are totally dependent to the host. Uh, based on their uh, host, they can be categorized into three groups. The first group of dermatophyte fungi are anthropophilic species. Anthropophilic species means species that has tendency to human. 
they prefer human as their specific host. Okay? They are transmitted from human to human through fallen hairs, the squamated epithelium, combs, hairbrushes, towel, etc. Using these things, they can be transferred from one human to another human. Uh, but anyway, they prefer human as the first specific uh, host. Species that can be categorized in this group are uh, Trichophyton robero, Microsporum oduni, and Epidermophyton flocosum. They are anthropophilic. The second category of dermatophytes are zoophilic species. Zoophilic species, as the name shows, zoo, it shows that they have a great tendency to animal. They prefer animals as their first host. Animals like pets, like cats, dog, and any pet which people likes to um, kept at home can be a source of uh, this uh, fungi. But sometimes a wild animal can be a source of these too. Uh, example of zoophilic uh, species of dermatophytes are Trichophyton violaceum and Microsporum canis. And finally, the third group is geophilic species. Uh, geophilic species, uh, geo, is returned to earth, is returned to soil. This species has a tendency to soil, to dead organic substances or environment. Uh, actually, they are saprophytic fungi, and they can live freely in soil or dead organic substances. They occasionally cause infection in humans and animals. Examples are Microsporum gypsum and Trichophyton agellio. Dermatophytes usually grow only on crotinized skin and its appendages and do not penetrate the living tissue. In some uh, infected persons, hypersensitivity to fungal, uh, fungal antigen uh, may uh, cause secondary eruptions such as vesicles on their finger. Uh, you know, in this situation, uh, fungus itself cannot cause any evade or any inflammation but reaction of body reaction the host body to fungal antigen will cause a allergic reaction or hypersensitivity which is called id reaction dermatophyte id or dermatophytid reaction id this reaction as is a kind of hypersensitivity response to fungal antigens. And these lesions uh, do not contain any fungal hyphae. And you can watch this vesicle on the microscope, but sometimes there is no fungal in this vesicle. It's the important things. And you may uh, ask why there is Allah no Allah fungal. Allah because Allah the fungi does not Allah cause Allah this Allah. reaction. This is just a reaction of body. This is just the um, allergic reaction of the body, not the reaction of the fungus. Because of that, when you watch this physical on the microscope, you might not see any the mycelium or anything from fungi. Most important dermatophytes that cause infection in humans are classified into the following three genera. A. Trichophyton which causes infection of hair, skin, and nail. Microsporum causes infection of hair and skin, but epidermophyton causes infection of skin and nails, but not hair. Now, after that, uh, we are going to start a physical manifestation of them. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. 
که با کلینیکال مستمانیفستیشن آف درماتوفایتز این جنرال اشهد ان Okay. <laughs> Zoophilic species are primarily parasitic of animals and infections may be transmitted to human following contact with the animals. Zoophilic infections usually elicit a strong host response and on the skin where contact with the infected animal has occurred. Infections if you La transfer the susceptible us. This formative skin stains may remain infectious in the environment for months or even for years. Therefore, transmission may take place by indirect contact long after the inactive, uh, long after the infective debris has been shed. Substrate like carpet. You know, carpet, a mattress, blanket, pillow uh, are the things uh, that can act as a vector, as a vector instrument. Uh, they can uh, keep uh, skilled skin on their themselves and transfer to an, another one. So paying attention, attention to hygienic situation of these things is very important. Thus, transmission of dermatophytes like trichophyton roberum, trichophyton interdigital, and epidermophyton flocosome is usually via the feet. In this site, infections are often chronic and may remain subclinical for many years, or only to become apparent when spread to another site, usually the groin of a skin. Subclinical infection uh, is the infection uh, that has no uh, symptom. Uh, it cannot be detected because there is no clinical symptom. There is infection, but it is hidden. Uh, in this kind uh, of infection, uh, transmission uh, can occur easily because you don't know the person is infected and uh, it seems uh, like a, a healthy person, but actually it has a subclinical infection and it can and they can transfer the infection to healthy person. You should be aware about subclinical infections. It is important to recognize the two web spaces are the major reservoir on the human body for these fungi and therefore it is not practical to treat infections at other sites without concomitant treatment of the two web spaces.
Okay. Uh, if you want to achieve a good cure, achieve a successful treatment, we should pay attention to the base, to the source of infection. The main source of infection is two web spaces. When we are uh, using drug to treatment other area of the food, we should pay attention and at the same time we should use drug uh, for this area, for two web spaces to uh, clean this area. Otherwise, the infection will not eradicate of the body and it will remain and become chronic. And also, uh, this area can act as a source to transfer uh, infection to other people. This um, area can be like a carrier and it's a risk for public health, for general population, uh, because uh, constantly they shedding infections, the skin scales, and these are carriers. So uh, when we are going to treatment, we should pay attention to two web space. Uh, another tina is tina, tina croesis. Tina croesis refer to dermatophytes uh, Phytosis of the proximal medial types, groin and buttocks. It occurs more commonly in males and is usually due to spread of the fungus form, the feet. It is common in men and it is spread from a feet to crosses area. Thus, the usual causative agents are trichophyton roberon, trichophyton interdigitae, and epidermophyton flocosal. I suggest you, when I send you the complete form of the lecture, uh, try to find the words which you see here in the internet. For example, uh, find the anatomical place of crisis. Where is crisis? Where is proximal uh, medial tides? Uh, being aware about anatomical situation of these words or knowing uh, medical terminology of these words, uh, is very helpful to understand the uh, fungal action easily, medical mycology easily. Tina on geom or dermatophyte onychomycosis. When you say uh, on geom or onychomycosis, you are referring to nail. Tina related to nail. Trichophyton roberum and trichophyton interdigital are the dominant dermatophyte species involved in this infection. In countries like Australia, United Kingdom, and United States, the incidence of dermatophyte onychomycosis has been estimated to be about 3% of the population, increasing up to 5% in the elderly with some subgroups such as minors, servicemen, and sportmen, etc. Why these categories? Uh, why sportsmen? Why servicemen? Because sometimes uh, they use uh, common UL showers, common bathroom, or they use changing room, which is uh, infected. And they can be infected in this area. It is important to stress that only 50% of these trophic nails have a fungal etiology. Therefore, it is essential to establish a correct laboratory diagnosis by either microscopy and or culture before treating a patient with a systemic antifungal agent. The Dermatophyte onychomycosis may be classified into main types. One, superficial white onychomycosis, in which invasion is restricted to patches or pits on the surface of the nail. Two, invasive or sub-onychomycosis, dermatophytosis, in which the lateral, distal, or proximal edges of the nail are first involved followed by establishment of the infection beneath the nail plate. 
Distal uh, subungual onychomycosis is the most common form of dermatophyte onychomycosis. The fungus uh, invades the distal nail bed, causing hyperkeratosis of the nail bed and eventual onycholysis and thickening of the nail plate. Finally, uh, the nail will be lysis. Because of that, it said that eventual onycholysis. Uh, as the name suggests, lateral subonigual onychomycosis begins at the lateral edge of the nail and often to involve the entire nail bed and nail plate. In proximal subonigual onychomycosis, the fungus invades under the cuticle and infects the proximal rather than the distal bed causing yellowish white spot which slowly invade the uh, lunula and then the nail plate. Lunula is this area of the nail, like this. Here is lunula, here. Uh, another uh, tina is, is the basis of the nail. Lunula is in this area. Another sort of tina is tina corporis. Tina corporis uh, refers to dermatophytosis of uh, the glabrous skin and may be caused by anthropophilic species uh, such as Trichophyton roberum, usually by spread from another body site or by geophilic or zoophilic species such as microsperm gypsum and microsperm canids following contact uh, with either contaminated soil or contaminated animal. Tinocropris will transfer to human. No. Uh, the last item uh, which has been taught here today is tinea capitis. And when you hear the word capitis, capitis is referred to head. So this tinea is related to head. Tinea capitis refers to dermatophytosis of the scalp. Three types of in vivo hair invasion are recognized. One, ectotrix invasion, two, endotrix hair, and three, fungus. First, ectotrix invasion. When we said tina capitis is in the form of ectotrix invasion, it means that it is characterized by the development of arthroconidia on the outside of the hair shaft. The cuticle of the hair is destroyed and infected hair usually fluorescence a bright greenish yellow color under wood's ultraviolet light. Uh, when you take the patients into a dark room and using wood ultraviolet light, you can see greenish or yellow color fluorescence. This shows that the tina capitis is in the form of ectotrix. Common agent for this form is uh, our microsperm canis, Naninzia gypsia, Trichophyton equinum, and Trichophyton vericosum. The second form of tina capitis is the endotrix hair invasion. Uh, in this uh, situation, when we said tina capitis in the form of endotrix, it means that uh, there is uh, the arthroconidia is inside the hair, <laughs> within the hair, not outside the hair. It is inside the hair, and when you use wood ultraviolet light, do not fluorescence, you cannot see any fluorescence in this situation because the fungi is inside the hair and it cannot emit fluorescence, radiates. All endotrix producing agents are anthropophilic, e.g. trichophyton tonsorans and trichophyton violaceo. The third form of tinea capitis is favus. Favus usually caused by trichophyton shionlini, 
produces fungus like crust or scatula and the corresponding hair lips. Now, uh, let's talk about the general diagnosis of uh, tinea. Clinical material which you need are uh, skin scrapping, nail scrapping, and epilated hay. These three things which you are needed. Another thing which is very important is that when the clinician are scrapping uh, this specimen, they should provide adequate and enough sample. Sometimes the amount of sample is inadequate and in the laboratory it's very difficult to work with this uh, insufficient amount of specimen. Uh, so they are not appropriate to make a definite diagnosis. The laboratory needs enough specimen to perform both microscopy and culture. Routine and turn round times for direct microscopy should be less than 24 hours. Uh, however, culture may take several weeks. Uh, microscopy is very rapid, but the culture takes place for uh, one or two or three weeks. And Dermatophytosis of skin, tinea, or ringworm, any ointment or other local application present should first be removed with an or uh, with an alocovid or alcovid. Alcovid is a sort of a handkerchief, is a sort of paper tissue which can be used to remove uh, grease or ointment from the skin, and after that, clinician should. Uh, scrapping the skin for gathering sample. Using a <coughs> sorry, uh, using a blunt scalpel, tweezer, or bone curate, firmly scrape the lesion, particularly at the advancing border. In case of vesicular tineopedis, the top of any fresh vesicles should be removed and the fungus is often plentifully full in the roof of the vesicle. In patients with suspected dermatophytosis of nail, onychomycosis I mean, the nail should be paired and scrapped using a blunt scalpel until the crumbling white uh, degenerating portion is reached. Any white crotting debris beneath the free edge of the nail should also be collected. Skin and nail spacement may be scrapped directly onto special black cards. Why we use black cards? Because black cardboard, it helps us uh, to make contrast to understand how much spacement uh, we have collected to see it easier and uh, to assess if it is enough or not. Uh, it must be stressed up to 30% of suspicious material collected from nail specimens may be negative by either direct microscopy or culture. A positive microscopy result showing fungal hyphae and or arthroconidia is generally sufficient for the diagnosis of dermatophytosis, but gives no indication as to species of fungus involved. Culture is often more reliable and permits the species of fungi fungus involved uh, to be accurately identified. Repeat collection should always be considered in case of suspected dermatophytosis with negative laboratory reports. Now, uh, direct microscopy, like as usual, uh, you should use 10% KOH or Parker ink or calcifleur white mounds and watch uh, skin scrapping or nail scrapping or epilated hair on the microscope. For culture, specimens uh, should be inoculated onto primary 
isolation media like subrodextrose agar containing cyclohexamide and incubated at 26 to 28 centigrade for four weeks. The growth of any dermatophyte is significant. Serology cannot help you for diagnosis and uh, identification is based on clinical symptom, microscopy, and morphology of the colony. For management of dermatophytes, what should we do? Any dermatophytes can be managed in this state. Treatment of dermatophyte is often dependent on the clinical setting. For instance, uncomplicated single cutaneous lesions can be adequately treated with a topical antifungal agent. However, topical treatment of the scalp and nail infection is often ineffective and systemic therapy is usually needed. So sometimes we need topical uh, treatment, sometimes we need systemic treatment to cure these conditions. Chronic or widespread dermatophyte infections, acute inflammatory tinea and Mucosin. Mucosin is this a white line. This can be seen in this area and this area. Sole and dorsal of the foot is the symptom of trichophyton roberum. Uh, ideally, mycological confirmation of the clinical diagnosis should be gained before systemic antifungal treatment, before uh, using uh, a tablet, uh, an oral antifungal treatment, we should diagnose the genius of the uh, fungus that cause these infection. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attendance and paying attention, my dear friends. Uh, hope uh, this lecture can be helpful for you. Now, uh, if you uh, have any question, you can ask now, or also you can send a question in the Telegram for me, or at the end of the class, uh, I will uh, come to you again and answer your questions if there is any. But now, please, uh, let's have a short break. Okay, Rad, it's okay. Uh, it's not your fault. I know the internet, sometimes there are some defects in the network. Sometimes the network is net, uh, is very weak or disconnected. This may happen for myself sometimes too. Don't worry about that. Um, 